Well, hey, welcome to uh, Click Video Mag on one of our uh, exciting days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, recording on Embargo Day for a, for a change. Um, we obviously wanted to do this uh, the day we announced the new cameras, the new kit. Unfortunately, you don't have too much today, I'm afraid. But no, but I'm going to sort of touch it. A bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you, you, <laughs> I, I want to talk to you about a couple of the, the, the pieces of glass yeah, in particular. Uh, so obviously today the, the big news, 5D Mark IV, uh, a successor to the 5D III. We've both used that camera and its predecessor and its predecessor you know, uh, for absolute years. Mm. And we're, we're really excited about um, this brand new beast. Uh, An incredible upgrade. We listened to a lot of photographers. We, we asked them what do they want upgrading. And it was more than just the basic spec. Obviously, basic spec, 30 million pixels, 7 frames a second. The uh, autofocus system from the 1DX2, your favorite piece, piece of equipment. <laughs> Love that beast. Um, and also things like the uh, dynamic range that we had on the 1DX2 that we put into ATD, being able to lift shadow areas, um, a good ISO rating up to 32,000, sure. built-in Wi-Fi, built-in GPS, uh, headphone socket the video photographers wanted, and uh, 4K up to up to 30 frames a second. Still sounds like the Swiss Army knife. So it, it is indeed. It still does because that's what 5D3 was. Indeed, you could, you could throw anything at it and it just works. Well, we, we love that term, the Swiss Army knife. Uh, exactly, you could do pretty much any shoot yeah, with sure. it. And, and it, it gonna, we we ask this of professional photographers on a regular basis. I'm going to give you one lens. Uh, to shoot with 24105. I'm going to tell you tomorrow what your shoot is. Choose a body now to 5D3. shoot in 5D3. For sure. and, and, and 5D4 looks, looks set to do exactly that. You've got the resolution for anything you could possibly need, frames a second for sports or actions, yeah, yeah. low light performance with high ISO, and video up to 4K. Pretty much everything you could, sure. you could want out of a body. Um, obviously, a new accessory added to the bottom there, the BG20. Uh, you're familiar with that. One of the things that you don't see a hell of a lot, because it's not on the back of your 1DX2, um, is this little button over here, this little button, which is your, your autofocus thing. Now, we saw that for the first that time. 72. 72. Yeah. And what it essentially is, to quickly change from autofocus mode from a single spot mm. to, to 9 to 61, yeah. etc., uh, you could just flick that lever. It was very, very quick and easy. Yeah, interesting. So I, I, I don't know why they didn't put it on the, on the DX2, but um, it's something that somebody coming up from a 7D2 wanting full frame is going to find that quite convenient, convenient and quite familiar. Yeah, that's very cool. Very interesting. So one big thing uh, on the BGE20, which is the new battery grip, uh, you've not now got the same LPE6Ns mm -hmm. as you have on the other cameras, but Batteries don't, don't, don't they, sit, they sit slightly. Yes, yeah. they're sitting slightly at an angle. The batteries don't fall out. There's now a locking switch, That's so that the batteries actually That's click really click in, yeah. which is very handy. So people in the field shooting wildlife sports action, they often come out, take the batteries, batteries falling on the floor, etc. That's not going to happen. And you'll see the contacts on the bottom. Each battery has its own contacts, as opposed to the single terminal which used to be on there. So that's not all we wanted to talk about. It's not the only thing we've announced today. You've been drooling over these little monsters in front of us. Especially. Most notably this, the, yes. uh, the 24105 F4L IS Mark II. Uh, straight off the bat, anything you notice slightly different about it? Well, the design is completely different. It, it just looks completely different than what, what 24105... If I grab this, I'm going to put it down again, I'm going to start <laughs> running. Well, you're a big user of the 24105 for your aviation, your air-to-air -air yes, type of stuff. Yeah. Um, you like it a hell of a lot. I do. Um, other than aesthetics, anything else? There's a lock button, which was never on 24105 normally. Feels slightly heavier. It does. Okay, yeah. It does. All right, so that's one of the sacrifices. It, it comes in a little bit heavier, comes in a little bit um, longer, a little bit larger in terms of build. It's a lot more professional feeling. Mm. Uh, it's a lot closer to 2472.8 in terms of build, design, construction, etc. Um, as you mentioned, the lock button's there for the first time. Obviously, the biggest change is stabilizer. The 24105 came out quite a long time ago, and it only had like a sort of one, maybe two stop stabilizer. Yeah, maybe, yeah. You now got four stops out of this. Sure. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a kit lens with the 5D Mark IV, uh, and obviously, it's going to sell standalone as as it is. But without just adding stabilizer, we improved optics, as we can do, as we've seen over the last couple of years uh, in short zoom lenses. Um, the optical quality, edge to edge sharpness, especially mm. chromatic aberration at 24, yeah. and a barrel pin cushioning type of effect at 105. All of those things have been improved sure. dramatically on this. So where your 24105 is your go-to lens, it's sharp, it's crystal clear, it's lovely to use. I'm afraid you're going to have to trade right. it in Mark II. Okay. Okay. Well, um, give me a good price. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, the, the second-hand market for gear is, is, is fantastic yeah. in this country, so uh, there's a lot of people going to find good reasons mm. to upgrade to that. And like the 5D3 to 5D4, yeah. it's more than just what it says on the box. When you see your samples, when you see the images from this lens, you'll be blown away. 
Uh, and obviously, the, the final little thing uh, that we've announced as well, the, in terms of lenses today, 1635 2.8 Mark III. Uh, no great changes from the Mark II in terms of build design, build construction. You can see it is a little bit bigger and again, a little bit heavier. It's most certainly heavier. But what we've done is we've taken a lot of the cues that we've had from the great announcements we've had up until now. It's not rectilinear like the 1124, mm -hmm. but a lot of the uh, spherical elements and UD elements we needed to get that 1124 really, really, really sharp at the edges of the frame, we've put into this. Also, some of the technology we put into uh, like the 100, 400 mm -hmm. and the 35, mm -hmm. 1.4, the, the air sphere coating, um, absolutely astonishing. And what you've essentially got is an incredible 2.8 lens giving you magic sharpness all across the entire yeah, frame. Uh, reduction in flare, better colors, better rendition overall, and a very, very, very good upgrade to that 2.8 lens. Looks interesting. It is, it is going to be quite, quite, quite the interesting thing. Yeah, mm. no, you want to grab that 24.05. So last thing we, we announced today, and, and quite sort of hidden quite subtly, is, is this little thing over here. Oh, SD card. And a little SD card. Not just an SD card, but a Wi-Fi SD Ooh. card. Now, we, we've, had, we've seen Wi-Fi cards before from a couple of different manufacturers. Um, majority of them offer you the capability to go into a dual slot camera, like a 5DS mm. or a 7D2, slide the SD Wi-Fi card in there, and you can then share images you can get quickly your, you can get your and images. easily. Yeah. So this, this is a new Wi-Fi card we've built specifically for 7D2 and 5DS, 5DSR, because a lot of people wanted mm -hmm. not only to share images, <gasps> da -da, they wanted... Control. Control, they want remote so shooting. So it works through the app. It works through the app. Really amazing. Which is fantastic. And, yes. and through the EOS utility software on, on, on your laptop as and well. And Camera Connect as well, yeah. And Camera Connect. So it's a very, very useful tool, especially for 72 users who want to shoot tethered. Bear in mind, one of the reasons why we didn't build Wi-Fi into the cameras originally was to not uh, lower the integrity or the structural yeah, integrity uh, with the proofing on the camera itself. So you're going to get remote control, but with a limited range. You're going to get sharing of images to your your, your phone, your smart, your, I, your iPad, etc. Within limited range, yeah, but you'll still have about five meters. It'll be more than ample. Well, exactly. Yeah, that's what most, most you photographers. Can't, you can't would. leave your camera further than that because it's going to well, walk away, <laughs> especially in this country. And, and also, sure. apparently, at Rio, it would appear. Apparently, yeah. yeah. Yes. So, um, having the, the the extra Wi-Fi adapters, and we still make the Wi-Fi yeah, adapters, true. the WFTs, which give you the fifty hundred meter range. This is a quick, light, low cost alternative to a hell of a lot of photographers. So we're excited for a lot of um, 5DS users and 72 users in particular are going to love this 72 little, for sure. little baby. Uh, and as I say, uh, I've been wanting something like mm. like that for absolutely ages. Okay. Um, camera and Wi-Fi adapter more than likely going to be in the market in September. Uh, the two new lenses coming up a little bit later, probably October, but the 24-105 in a kit with a 5D4 from uh, October onwards Is as well. Is there plans to put it in any of the other kits? Or will it just remain with 5D4? It's just going to stay, stay with 5D4 at this stage. The uh, 6D is going to carry on, obviously, with the, the lighter 24-105 SEM lens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and as you say, non-L non lens. So that's it for the new products. Again, <laughs> blown away today. The internet's going to be going nuts uh, oh, as... Sure. Uh, for, for opinion pieces on that and uh, to that end uh, we grabbed Clinton Libber to come into the studio to talk to us about his first opinion and Quentin Mills uh, and we're going to talk to those, those two shortly but off the bat your impressions sure need to get my grabby little paws in some of this indeed I, I mean for a DX2 user I mean you shoot sports action all the time I do it's not a big sacrifice it gives you something else it gives me something else. It's definitely that something else. That that thirty million, the ISO, that kind of thing definitely gets me gets me interested a little bit. Cool. Because a lot of the stuff that I do is still static. Yeah. And for static, you don't need. And DX2 is, is heavy. Yeah. It's heavy to carry. Well, th th this with with the grip yeah, is, the is is quite a beast. Mm. But um, on its own with a single battery, very 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 easy. We'll see what that does. Yeah. Th this you, you'll be blown away. And obviously today there's going to be a lot of samples kicking around the net. Take the time, have a look at the image samples, mm. and, and you'll you'll see what we mean. There is a considerable increase in. In, in quality awesome. and performance, not just from the camera perspective, but on the glass, as you would expect. And on paper, it might seem like small changes, but when you add up all the small changes together, the end result is a big, big, That's big improvement. For sure. Cool. We're really excited about that. Well, let's have a look at that. A uh, couple of those interviews, some of the opinion pieces from pro photographers. I think first up is, is Clinton. Let's, let's, let's see what Clinton had to say about this earlier on today. So here with Click Video Mag, obviously it's 5D4 announcement day. We're pretty damn excited about this new camera. Uh, we've got Clinton Libber in. Uh, you've been an old standard with us on, on a couple of road shows over the last couple of years. Yep. Obviously, we'll nag you to come and do some road shows again in the future. Be great. 
Uh, but Clinton's uh, a damn fine shooter in the um, fashion, beauty, portrait kind of environment. Uh, you also shoot quite a fair amount of video having done your own full-length feature movie. So um, it was incumbent on us to get somebody like you to come in and give us your first impressions on, on 5v4. Right out of the box, you've seen the spec. What do you think? Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. One, one word. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. can only be one word. Uh, the specs are just right. I think it's on the money. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying that. This sure. is really on the money. This is cool. the jump that people were looking for. Um, I, don't, I don't know what more we can say about it except getting it into our hands and shooting the damn thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we're worried, like, like what happened with the One DX Mark II. When we announced it, people looked at the spec on paper and they were like, oh, it's only 2 million pixels more. It's only 2 frames a second more. But you've got to realise, I mean, jeez. <laughs> the, 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 there's a lot more to it than that, yeah. There's a hell of a lot more to it. And, and to get that level of performance, you don't just... Uh, when, how often... We've just had the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How often do they break records? Sure. It takes years to break records. Yeah, and yeah. essentially, you know, that's what you're doing with a piece of technology here. You you setting new benchmarks. Well, I'm, I'm glad you reinforce our, our belief. You know, on, on paper, it might seem like it's only six frames a second to seven. It's only 22 million pixels to 30. Everything that we could possibly upgrade on this camera, we most certainly well, did. Put it this way. If you can offer a photographer's mind or eye an upgrade, forget about the equipment. Yeah, think yeah. about the photographer. If you could tell a photographer that every few years they're going to get 10% better, you're going to take it every Absolutely, day of the yeah. week. Well, I, every I, day of the week. I'd like to think this is a bit more than 10, 10 percent better. Um, the, the groovy thing is, uh, as, as the five D three was a fantastic tool for yeah. pretty much any photographer yeah. to go to any environment. Would you be as comfortable if I gave you the five D four today, straight out of the box? You would be able to take it into sports action at seven frames a second, landscape, portrait, beauty, thirty million pixels, Wi Fi to shoot tethered in the studio. You've Excited got the headphone socket. You've got the four K video. You can do pretty much anything yeah. with this camera. Yeah, very excited about all of those those features that you're mentioning over there. Um, for me, the standouts, um, 30 million. I mean, I shoot 5DS yeah. a lot, um, and, and the old 21 million pixels. So between coming in between the two, sometimes the 5DS just feels like a little bit of overkill. Yeah, yeah. You can feel your machine creaking <laughs> in the background with, four hard drives, with, yeah. with the pressure of that. And I think this is absolutely spot on the money. Increased Good. ISO performance, yeah. um, speed, sharpness adjustment. It's an exciting camera. It's a really exciting camera. Yeah. Well, we'll be interested to see what the uh, end result of that dual pixel raw technology is. That being able to micro adjust mm. sharpness. Mm. Mm. And, and especially you. You shoot a lot long focal lens, shallow depth of field, 85 yeah. mm. And, and I, this, I'm still old school. I focus and recompose the whole time. Right, right. And I lose... In any given shoot, I'll probably lose 40% of my images. Right. And the little voice in my head the whole time says, why are you shooting like this? But, you know, no. it's, it's the look that I've chosen. It's my style. And I do believe that this is going to change my hit ratio dra dramatically. Well, I, I'd Cycle. like to think that that was the mentality mm. when, when mm. Canon came up with this camera. It was more yeah. than just an upgrade, more than just adding features that photographers wanted. We want to increase your hit ratio. I, and I, I'm glad you, you said that because... It's my mindset from every single upgrade that we've done. It's, it's never so much the camera. The camera is just a tool, but we just want to make it easier for you, the photographer, you, the creative, you, the visionary, and to get that. more images in the back. It's, it's definitely doing that. Look, 5D is iconic. 5D has always been iconic. Yeah, yeah. From first full frame, Absolutely. That, that, that's accessible to everyone, to first video, to first... A lot of people <laughs> are going to call it something else, but... Adjusting your sharpness. Oh, man, come on. Love it. So, welcome back to uh, Click Video Mag. Uh, I've got a nice guest today, Quentin Mills, long time Canon user, long time 5D3 user. And today, on the announcement of this little baby, 5D Mark IV, I thought I'd bring him in here and uh, grab his first impressions. So, you might have read some of the rumors online over many, the last couple of days. Many. But um, what I wanted to talk to you about was uh, one or two key things that we thought would be specifically interesting for you. So welcome, thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thank you. So Quinton's a uh, well-known fashion, uh, wedding, uh, corporate event, uh, portrait type photographer, and 5D3 is your go-to tool, tool mm -hmm. to use it day yeah. in, day out. Okay, mm 
So you've been a 5D fan since 5D1, 5D2? Absolutely. Five, Every single. 5D1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, it's going to be 4, trust me. <laughs> All right, so let me just give you a quick rundown uh, to confirm, obviously, the rumors that you might have heard. It is a brand new 30 million pixel sensor. Mm -hmm. It'll shoot 7 frames a second. It's got 61 points autofocus system, very similar to on the, uh, the 1DX. Yeah. It's got the 100,000 uh, pixel light metering system, which is brand new and unique to this, right. which feeds face information uh, to the live view for the video. It features a whole bunch of interesting things in terms of color detection, subject detection for the autofocus system. Um, but there's one thing that I really want to talk to you about more than anything else. Yes, it's got 4K video. Yes, it's got headphone socket. Yes, yes, yes. Everything that everybody wanted. The ISO goes up to 32,000 straight out of the box. Mm -hmm. The dynamic range has been improved, very much similar to what you saw on the 1DX2 where you can lift shadows right. by a couple of stops. You've got that in here. But the biggest thing and the biggest change is due to the dual pixel autofocus system. Now, we've had dual pixel autofocus system on a couple of cameras, mm -hmm. and it's specifically designed for video. So when you switch it over to video, what the camera has on each pixel, there's two microsites. Right. And on those microsites, it can use that for focus information. And what it allows it to do is focus very quickly, very accurately under live view situation right. for video and for live view. So it's very, very good, very, very handy. But because we have those two microsites, we can use that information for other things. Mm -hmm. So we showed you earlier, there's a little setting on the menu here called Dual Pixel Raw. Right. Which, uh -huh. what we can what we can do now, taking a photograph in Dual Pixel Raw, slows the camera down, so instead of seven frames a second, you're only gonna get about three. But what you're able to do now is you now save a file, it's around about 60 meg, so it's double the size of an, a regular RAW file, which is normally about 30, 32 meg. And what you need to have is a 30 million pixel file but with some additional information from a second microsite. Right. Yeah, I can see where you're going to do this. <laughs> Those in situations, especially for pictures that have been taken with longer focal lengths or shallower depth of fields, especially shallower depth of fields, where you're shooting a model in a studio environment, and because you're shooting at f2 or she's moving forwards, you're moving right. backwards, you've got the shot and the focus is just on her nose and you want her eye. What we can then do is take that dual pixel raw file afterwards, go into Canon's DPP software, and micro adjust wow. where the sharpness is exactly. It's a micro adjustment, mm -hmm. tiny, tiny, <laughs> tiny, tiny. And it, again, it's very, very special mm -hmm. for those shallow depth of fields. If you've just got, just missed the sharpness yep. point on the eye, you can slide it in and slide it out. Right. So, <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. Now, um, Clinton has got on record saying it's quite a game changer. We're, we're quite hesitant in saying it's not a game changer. It's another tool. Right. It's not a focus readjustment. It's just a sharpness adjustment. And it's like a micro adjustment. If your lens is back focusing, front focusing, etc., right. it can help you a little bit more. Okay. So that's interesting step number one. Okay. Step number two, what you can do. There's no, you can't combine these effects, it's one or the other. Mm -hmm. The other thing that this DP RAW allows you to do is change your bouquet. And specifically looking at like wildlife photographers, for example, you've taken a photograph of a leopard and there's a blade of grass. You've got really, really shallow depth of field at F4, for example. That blade of grass is just across the eye of the leopard. Okay. What you can then do is shift where that bouquet lies. So you can move that blade of grass so it's no longer across the eye of the leopard. And again, this is you've got the bride with some trees and some yeah. leaves, etc. You've got the perfect shot, perfect pose, but there's now a leaf that's just just out of focus, but it's just distracting. Just move it out the way a little bit. Grief. I, okay. don't, I don't even know how you would begin to work that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's subtle. And please, please bear in mind, it's, it's micro adjustments. So we, we're very, very, very careful in what we're saying. It's not a focus change, not mm -hmm. a focus readjust. It's just moving sharpness, just moving the bouquet. And essentially... With, with the pixel having two microsites underneath it, it's almost like it's looking at the same subject from two different angles. Right. And you've got the shot, but you can just move the twist slash. Yeah, exactly. So, like we said, not just 30 million pixels, not just seven frames a second, not just 4K video, having that as well. What do you think? Well, I think the, the, the ability to, to tweak that, that focus to make it absolutely spot on mm. um, is, uh, is, a, is a great little addition because, um, I mean, no one, no one keeps still, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how many uh, boards you stick behind them and make them stay where they are, they, they just keep moving. Yeah. Um, and I, I suppose even from the photographer's point of view, if you move that little bit backwards and forwards, yeah, uh, yeah. the ability to, I, I suppose it depends on how, on how micro that is, yeah. but the ability to 
I mean, there's so many times that you, you know, you shoot a couple of shots and, and the one that's, it's, it's on the tip of the, uh, you know, the eyelash and you yeah, wish yeah. that it was just on the eye. Uh, if, um, if you can now just tweak that, that, um, that would be uh, pretty cool. Well, put it, put it this way, the odds are good that you're going to be able to tweak <laughs> it. So, you know, like, like we talked to Quinton, uh, Clinton earlier, um, it's not infallible. It's not perfect. Right. It's a micro adjustment. It's, it's small moves. You might have the perfect pose and the model absolutely perfect, mm. but just quite yeah. out. And you, you might just still not get it. You might still not get it, but we're increasing the odds. And this is the clincher where we, when we talk about the 5D4 and going forward, a lot of people are going to, going to have opinions about how great it is, mm. how rubbish it is, whether it's oversold and underappreciated or overappreciated. Um, we'll, we'll see as time goes right. by. But you, you're, you're one of the quintessential photographers uh, who, who, who will see this for exactly what it is. As a wedding photographer, that tiny, tiny, mm. tiny little bit of adjustment that could be the difference between a great shot and the, <gasps> the absolutely amazing award-winning shot. This could make that little bit of difference. And essentially what Canon's intention was, not a game changer, not a paradigm mm -hmm. shift, not a massive thing, but just another tool in your bag. Okay. And can you um, turn it on and off? Yes. So uh, for the couple shoots, turn it on and switch it off again afterwards. Exactly. So you go switch it into regular raw. Yeah. Shoot regular raw all over the place, left, right, and center. For those specific shots where yeah. you need that, then you're going to switch it into dual pixel. Yeah, and, and dragging around a 60 uh, meg uh, Well, it's file. a 60 meg file. It's not 60 million pixels. That's something yeah. you've got to be very careful of because yeah. the internet's going to get that wrong. Right. We know. But it's a 30 million pixel file, but a 60 meg, you know, it's a big chunk of dot. Yeah, yeah. I can see, uh, you know, new card sizes coming out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, again, we wanted your first impressions all off the bat, and uh, I'm glad to see that you're reinforcing what we think. Absolutely. I mean, I think that could be a, a fantastic uh, addition. If, and as I say, I mean, the, one of the other things that I shoot are um, newborns, but, but humanely. Um, <laughs> and uh, something like that where, you know, you, you're pretty close to the subject and, you, you know, you might get the tip of a nose versus just behind that where you want to be. Um, yeah. and, and the ability to, to tweak that. I and mean, that's, that's going to be really, really, cool. really cool. Good. Yeah. Good. Well, we can't wait to see it in practice. Um, we're going to put one in your hands in a couple of days' time. Excellent. And as soon as we get a final version ready to, ready to shoot, and we're going to put you to the test. We're going to tell you to shoot it and tell you to come back and tell us what you think and, and bring us some samples of how well it did or didn't work. Because obviously, you know, it could go both ways. Sure. But um, over, over, overwhelming impression from, from the get-go, you think this is a, a piece of tool that you definitely, definitely want to have? Absolutely. Um, every every upgrade that that I've had so far from I mean it, it started with a 10, 20, 5, 1, 2, you know yeah has has always been uh, there's definitely been a reason for me to to upgrade. Um, I think you know certain people would would say what's the difference? It's not really that that big of a of a jump, but right. but every one of them has had a a, a different reason to upgrade whether it's ISO whether it's um, uh, the speed of focus uh, etc you know th sure. th there's there's always been a reason and I think the the 30 me megapixel for me is uh, is great good um, the this this micro adjustment um, I'm just going to need to stick a sticker somewhere to say remember to switch <laughs> and then remember to switch back yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, you know the the new ISO and uh, and that sort of thing I, I'm, I'm really excited to to see where it goes it's I'm, I'm definitely excited after I played with the 1DX2 yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know this this I'm going to be very interested to see how how this uh, performs good excited right. well so we'll find out in a couple of days cool. Quinton thanks very much for joining yeah, us we're looking forward to seeing some of your images uh, in, in some interviews coming up Fantastic. and also Roadshow you, you're talking on Roadshow for us yeah. for the first time so yeah, absolutely very keen Quinton Mills <laughs> coming on Roadshow soon to a town near you Thanks very much for cool. joining Thank us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, one final thing for, for this episode, uh, as we promised at the end of last episode, uh, is about this little XE10. Mm. Uh, like you have bridge cameras, uh, your SX60, which has okay. got pro SLR type features, mm -hmm. but it's a compact camera. We, we have this little baby in the market, the XC10, which we launched it as a combination camera. It's a 12 million pixel still camera, built in 10 times zoom, but it is a 4K, very, very, very high bit rate at 300 megabits per second video camera. 
And it's sort of sold as a video camera first and foremost, as a 4K camera. Obviously, yeah. 4K is one of those things that's coming up left, right, and center. But taking design concepts from like your PowerShot SXs, it looks yeah, like... Yeah, I wanted to say that lens looks exactly like an SX. Exactly. The, the sensors are bigger. It's a little bit closer to a one-inch sensor. Mm -hmm. But the 10 times zoom comes from a PowerShot SX kind of design. The camera itself is, is a video camera first and foremost, and, and 4K as well as full high def with various frame rates. It's actually very, pretty damn good, but with a bit rate up to 310 megabits per second in 4K, uh, using the, the CFast technology, it's an incredibly powerful little tool. And it's, it's tiny. And it's tiny. You can carry it with you anywhere. You don't have to, some, some instances like news gathering, you can't take a video camera because people look, ooh, that's a big thing. Well, exactly. Uh, a, a 4K video camera with a 10 times zoom yeah, sure. uh, is often a shoulder mounted yeah. big, big piece of work. And, and walk into an airport or a police station or anything it's like that. Yeah, um, this looks like a touristy camera, but can deliver an, an incredible result. And Canon had the mindset behind this camera to go into like what we call citizen journalism. So we give it to newspapers. Um, exactly for their reporters, right, yeah. they can get 12 million pixel stills for their newspapers or magazines, which is good enough for the vast majority of environments. Simple but being able to have that added bonus of getting uh, some 4K footage if they needed it yeah. to do an interview, plug a microphone in here, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we, we created a couple of local ambassadors. We, we asked Clint Deliver, you saw him earlier, talking about 5D4, um, but he's also quite a, quite a decent filmmaker. And we, 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 we gave him an XC10 to use for a couple of months to see what he thought of it. Uh, not only him, but also a guy called Alan van Asperchen, who's also a, a filmmaker who's mm -hmm. done a whole bunch of interesting things for Red Bull and a variety of different clients uh, around the world, not only in South Africa. And we said to them, take this camera, put it through the paces, let us see what you can do with it. Now, Eldon shot a really, uh, really cool documentary in townships with people playing football. He deliberately shot the camera at, in high def at a, at a higher frame rate to get that sort of slow-mo yeah. kind of vibe. Clinton stuff, obviously quite, quite different. But let's have a look see what these two guys put together for us in terms of like a demo or a showreel of what the XC10 can, can, can do. I'm a bad kid. 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 I
When you come from a snobbish background of shooting C300, then the first time you put this in hand, you kind of want to smirk at its tiny little chip that it has and its fixed lens. But when you become realistic about the situation, you appreciate the fact that it has such a small form factor and that it delivers c-log footage and that it shoots 4k and that it possibly has the most awesome little focus tracking system in this package you point a camera at stuff and with your finger on the touch screen you go focus on that 
do I want it to pull fast, slow, medium, set it all up and boom, you just touch it. It defaults to face detection, but this magic little finger overrides it and you focus on anything and it holds it anywhere in the frame, no matter where you go to or when you come back, it holds it. Big plus, that alone for me probably makes this camera worth it. When you add the uh, bright light eyepiece, that's kind of what it looks like. It's not bad at all. Okay, so that comes off, the screen flips out. Not a big fan of that, but I guess it's handy for if you're shooting something way up there or low down there. It's handy. The only disappointment and drawback is that once you pop this one on for uh, shooting in bright conditions, you lose the functionality of the touch screen, but that's kind of obvious and you switch over to manual and focus manually. Having said that, the focus ring on this camera is simply superb. It is not short and twitchy and jumpy like you experience with DSLR cameras. During the review, obviously, I got my assistant to do the shooting. He is not a regular shooter, but he found the camera to handle very, very comfortably and sort of fell in love with it because he doesn't have the experience of a cinema series camera. So what we did for this review was I basically, if you want to call it DOP'd the review and gave it to Tarshis to shoot. And uh, my only instructions were shoot wides, very few of them, because irrespective of whether you're shooting a wide on a C, 300 or 500 or whatever it may be or you shooting a wide on a little small chip camera they're going to look pretty much similar just in terms of depth of field that that you have very deep focus throughout the image so we try to avoid that except for one or two establishing shots other than that i dialed it up to 135 moles and then to 240 moles this was the instruction to him to only use those two focus lengths to attempt to create a little bit of blur and separation in the images very successfully. So the combination of the small form factor, the great focus and the C-log footage makes this an ideal second shooter. If you are not in the situation where you are already shooting C300 and you need a strong ENG styled camera. Small chip cameras are notoriously difficult to achieve blurred backgrounds or foregrounds and to create a little bit of depth and separation in your image. So we very, very specifically shot this video in a way to showcase the camera's ability to achieve what DSLR lovers around the world have now come to call sort of their cinematic mood or feel of having images with softer backgrounds and foregrounds. I'm sure the review video speaks for itself with all of that. Menu navigation throughout the camera, quite simple to get to grips with. Once again, if you're familiar with the Canon system, there are a lot of familiar menu items from picture styles, frame rates, data rates, bit resolution. It's all very, very simply laid out and nothing that you're going to tear your hair out about. In hand, ergonomically, yeah, it's not great. It, it feels a little bit awkward. I guess the side grip is kind of modeled on the cinema camera's side grip although it doesn't feel anything like that in hand. Small irrelevant issues because it is light enough that you really don't feel insecure about the camera slipping out of hand or being too heavy. It's very easy. Who's gonna shoot with this camera? Well, as 
as a second camera, it's great. As a 4K interview camera where you want to pull two different shots off of the same piece of footage, it's great. As its own camera for a little documentary story, it's great. Once again, it has C-Log footage. If you want C-Log footage to fit it into an environment where you have two or three other cameras. Drawbacks, it's not a professional film camera. Don't expect all of the high-end inputs that a professional video camera has because it's simply not that. And if you want to gripe and moan about a few things that are missing, it's your own fault. Take it for what it is. It's the evolution of the camcorders, if you want to call it that. Judging by form factor, you think back to the little candy bars and those style cameras that you take away on holiday and you shoot the family and kids. Well, this will do that for you. It'll give you stills at 12 million pixels, but then it will slip into a professional environment, put on a suit and deliver C-log footage slow motion footage up to 100 or 120 frames per second depending on how you're using the camera it'll also deliver time lapse so who's it aimed at and is it worth the price difficult one to answer because there are a few other cameras in the marketplace that come in at a price possibly a little bit higher than this camera but offer something a lot more some of the black magic offerings come to mind okay so overall picture quality looks great no complaints about picture quality um, and the thing everyone always wants to know is how does it handle in low light it does get noisy hell it's a tiny little sensor of course it's going to get noisy as i said before it is not a cinema camera it is not a large chip camera so low light not ideal if you're martin scorsese but then martin scorsese is not going to be buying this camera so for the people that it is aimed at i think you're still getting a very very admirable picture out of it in low light settings um, a very usable picture out of it in low light settings what a fabulous little all-rounder That's it for this episode of Click Video Mag. We're really excited to bring it to you on Embargo Date. Uh, obviously, we're going to try and do that as we announce new products uh, moving forward on Embargo Date. We'll have an opinion piece from a couple of pro photographers, but also some uh, some specs, so we can be the first of the internet with that kind of info. Um, obviously, this is that's the end of this episode. Yep. We're really excited about next episode because we're coming to you from... Fotokino. Fotokino, the big photographic trade show. It happens yeah. every two years in Cologne in Germany. Uh, so we're going to be taking our cameras, our microphones along there. Uh, you'll see us dancing in Lederhosen in front of the Rhine. No? Stop. No, okay, I'll stop. Um, but we'll have some interviews with a whole bunch of uh, cool people from Canon Europe. Uh, we love Fotokina because it's like a celebration. Uh, we get together with a whole bunch of friends that we know from all over the world. Uh, let's see what our friends talk about. Uh, what, what, uh, let's get some interviews uh, and bring you a look into um, the Fotokina world, a little bit more than just um, what you'll see on the internet of the show stands, etc. Uh, let's see yeah. what Canon does at Fotokina and uh, get some people behind mm. the scenes. Yeah. Sure. So that's really exciting. It is. So next next issue from until next issue from germany <laughs> that's us today thanks for watching thank you very much